If you want to build an app in UiPath by simply describing it in plain text, you should watch this video. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's time for another video. It's been a while, but Gen AI is everywhere. And in this video and the next several videos, I'm going to talk about Gen AI in some shape or form as it relates to UiPath and their products. So in this video, we're going to build an app by simply describing it in plain text and then having UiPath Autopilot uh, generate the app for us. So let's jump right in. So we're inside my environment here, and this is a community edition uh, environment. Uh, that means it's something that everyone can do if you want to play around with UiPath products. A lot of them are in the community edition. It's free to use. You cannot use it commercially, but it's still a really good playground to sort of get a feel for what the products can do. So I just have a, a basically a, an empty environment here. One thing you need to uh, remember is to activate a couple of features before you start uh, building apps. And because the app that we're going to build today is going to use what's called a data service, which is sort of a database, but not really, but still sort of, um, we are going to make sure that that's enabled. So we go to admin, then we select our tenant, we select services, and we can see here that the data service is enabled because it's visible here in the screen. If it isn't visible, you go up here, click the Add Services button, and then the data service will be listed here. You can set a checkbox and select Add, and then it will be added. But it's already added in my environment, so we don't need to do anything else. So instead of uh, that, we'll just go back to Apps Studio. And this is where things get a little bit interesting, because now we have Autopilot. And what is Autopilot? Well, Autopilot in UiPath is basically an assistant that can generate stuff for you. In Studio um, for Windows, it can generate anything from um, code to expressions and stuff like that. In Apps Studio, it can generate an app for you. And it can do that in several different ways. If we look at the screen here, we can see we can generate an app from an entity. So if we have an entity inside of the data service, it can actually generate an app to enter data into that entity. We can also use one of these templates, or we can upload an image of a form, and then it will try to interpret that form. We'll do that in a different video. And then create an app for entering data digitally into a form that looks like the one we have shown it, and then save the data into a data service. In this uh, demo, I'm going to do it from text. So basically, I prepared a prompt, and we're going to paste that into uh, this field here, and then uh, hit the Send button and then we'll see what happens. And let's uh, do the pasting first. And basically, I will just read out what I put in the prompt. Create an app for entering student information. I need two sections with each their own header. In the personal info section, I want to enter first and last name, as well as middle initial, age, gender, male, female, or other, and nationality. In the contact info section, I want to enter street address. I'm going to spell that correctly, like that. And I want two fields for that. Uh, we want postal code, we want state, and ideally a dropdown of all 50 US states. I don't know if it can do that, but we'll try. Um, country, email, and phone number only. Name, fields, and email are mandatory. I need a save button and a cancel button. The cancel button should clear all fields in the form. That's it. And then I've selected this uh, check mark here, create entity, because Hopefully, it'll interpret this text and then create an entity for those fields so we can actually save these, uh, these data entries. So let's uh, click Send and see what happens. So what it's going to do is it's going to try to sort of you know understand what it is I asked for. And then it's going to start in the background. And you can see that's starting to happen now. It's actually going to start to generate a form that hopefully looks like what I wanted. And then it's also going to set up entities inside the data service so that there's actually a place to store the data that I enter into the form. And it's not going to take, well, I was going to say it's not going to take very long, but it's already done. So uh, let's have a look at the form. So basically, I asked for two sections, personal information and contact information. In the uh, personal information, there's a first name, last name, middle initial. Ideally, I would have liked to see that in between the first and the last name, but 
There you go. Age, gender, nationality, and the gender. You can see that that's a drop down list. We also have the street address. I asked for two fields. So there's street address one, street address two. There's a postal code field. There's a state field, country, email, and phone number. And then we have the save and cancel buttons down here at the bottom. If we look at um, how this is actually structured inside of App Studio, what it did is it created a main page. That main page has a what's called a page container in it. And that page container then points to another page. That's what we have here at the bottom of the list. And in here, we can see all of the different controls. So here I can see the save button, the, the cancel button, and all of the properties for those buttons. So for example, if I wanted to add another control, um, let's add a container just for fun. We'll add that here at the bottom. And then we'll drag the save button into that and also the cancel button. If I can get it, there we go. And then I'll change the layout for this control to be horizontal. So we have these two buttons next to each other. We can also see that for the gender dropdown list, for example, if we go to the general tab up here, we can see that it generated a list source of, of type string with three options, male, female, or other. And for the state, I'm very curious to see what it did here. And basically, I think it, it gave us two states to choose from the first two, Alabama and Alaska, if you go by alphabetical. So it does have limitations, and I'll get back to that in just a minute. So anyways, what also happened is if we go to our data service here, we can see that when we started this project, there were no entities here. If I do a refresh, hopefully very soon, there will be a student information form entity in here. And this is basically an entity with all of the fields that I defined in my text and some other fields, extra fields for uh, the last update time, create time, updated by, and so forth. Uh, some some, some you know, basic information that, that the data service likes to keep track of. We can also see if we go to the data tab that there is no data in the entity yet. An entity is sort of like a table in a database, but not really, but still kind of really. So I think of it as a table. So if we go back to our app now and do a preview of it, it's going to open uh, another uh, browser tab with this form that was generated by the application. And I have done uh, zero to it, except rearrange the save and cancel button. Um, if we quickly go back to the designer here, we can actually see if we click the save button and go to the events tab, we can see that there is a clicked on rule for this button. And we can see if we edit that rule, that all of the fields are going to be filled out. It's, this is um, create entity record activity. So this is going to add stuff to a new record in the data service. If I go back to the page, and then click the cancel button and see what rules are created here. I asked for it to clear the fields when I click the cancel button. We can see that it says create rule. That basically means that it hasn't created a rule yet. So that requirement was sort of ignored. So um, if we go to the preview page here and then try to enter some stuff, we can also see that only the first name, last name, and the email fields are marked with a star. So those are the mandatory fields. Um, so if I try to um, enter data here, you know, and I'll enter, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, gender, I do identify as male, and I'm Danish. And I could put in street address, and I could select either Alabama or Alaska, but I'm not from either of those states. So I'll enter Denmark into the country field. I will type in an email, and I'm actually going to make a mistake here. So this is not an, a valid email address that I enter. And then just a fake phone number here. And then click Save. Now, nothing is really going to happen because we haven't defined anything other than saving the data when the, the Save button is clicked. So if we now go to the data service and do a refresh here, go to the Data tab, we can see that it actually created um, a record in here. And as we can see, the email bob bob dk not a valid email. But we actually did ask it, or it actually did a validation of the entered email. It just didn't sort of enforce that custom rule um, that it shouldn't save stuff unless it's valid. So again, another limitation. 
So where does this leave us? Well, this is the first iteration of Autopilot for apps. Is it great? Is it perfect? No, <laughs> it's not. Is it pretty good? I think so. I really do. This, again, is the first iteration. This stuff was, I believe, scheduled for release in the fall, in October. Uh, but UiPath have sort of moved forward some of the releases because they want feedback from, from us users and, and, and people like you and I. So um, I like it because the worst part of building an app for me is adding field after field after field after field and making sure the layout is sort of okay. This can actually help me do that in many, many cases. Would I like it to be more flexible? Would I like to be able to sort of inside a page, just right click and then run autopilot in place? Sure, I would. Would I like it to enforce these kinds of rules? Sure, I would. Would I like it to be able to process or create forms from more than one entity? That's another limitation. Yes, I would. But I'm sure those things are coming. This was just a glimpse of what it can do now and what it's going to be able to do in the future. Um, I have more autopilot stuff coming up. I have more TNAI videos coming out, also about document understanding the uh, modern version. Uh, so if you like this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. There's more videos coming out soon, I promise. And then other than that, just thank you for watching so far and hope to see you in the next one.